Hi folks, in today's video I'm going to be showing you the printer I use and what I do to maintain it for our t-shirt printing business. Keep watching. Right, well if you're going down the t-shirt transfer printing road as what I've done for the past 11 years, then you really want a good reliable printer and then you're going to obviously need to maintain it as well and also stock it with with inks because if you're going to be using the original cartridges for example uh, like these ones these are the uh, original set of six different colored cartridges that come with my epsom 1500 w printer and for those of you who are in usa or canada i think the same printer is called the artisan 1430 i think it is and um it's basically the same printer as the Epson 1500W here in the UK. So yeah, these are the standard cartridges that came with it. Now I've never actually used these. And I get a lot of people ask me, what ink do I use? Uh, can I use the standard cartridges? Can I use any other standard cartridges with whatever printer they've got? Well, the answer to all them question, questions is yes. The basic requirement you need is that it be a, an inkjet printer for this type of transfer printing that I do. There are different methods of other types of printer out there, for example, laser printers, but they could, they warrant a different type of transfer paper and uh, obviously a different ink setup, and that can work out very, very expensive. The reason why I use what I use is because ink is going to be used in quite abundant quantities on your printer, because you're gonna hopefully be printing out a lot of T-shirts, and as a result of that, ink normally is very very expensive for example if you was to buy the original epsom ink cartridges for the this printer on a regular basis these work out at probably uh, about 12 pound each cartridge and there's six of them there so you're looking at probably about 70 odd pounds worth of cartridges and bearing in mind that when you're using the printer a lot more frequently it does a lot more maintenance cycles as well and Epson printers are renowned for wasting quite a lot of ink in their maintenance cycle. So all your highly valuable ink from uh, the genuine Epson supplier is going down into so in the side of your printer into the waste ink pads. And that can work out very, very expensive and that will really eat into your profit. So as a result of that, there's a few other things you can do to bring the cost of the printing down. And what that one of them, or one of the main things is, is to fit or use aftermarket cartridges. Now, as I say, these are genuine Epson ones, but if you go on eBay, for example, you, I've, got, uh, I've just pulled up some uh, prices there. You can buy 35 of these cartridges. There's six there, basically. So you're looking at uh, four times that amount, nearly five times that amount, and you can buy them in cartridge form for about £12.69 but you've still got the hassle of these running out pretty quick and then you've got to open your printer up take the cartridges out put the new ones in and then you sometimes have to go through a cleaning cycle and all that can take out a really lot of time and also waste a lot of ink in the process so going down the route of putting aftermarket cartridges in will bring your cost down from the original ones and it will work with the transfer uh, papers which I use but it's still quite a faff and it's also still quite expensive because of the amount of ink used. The next strategy is to go for a, a refillable system. Now very similar to these, you can get these with little rubber bungs on the top uh, which you can pull out and then you use a syringe, you buy some bulk ink like this and then you can start filling these up when they run dry. That can work out pretty messy as well because it means you've got to open the printer up, get to the print heads. Uh, and then pour a little rubber bung out and then inject the right amount and if you overfill it it all runs out and then you could have problems with mess so I don't personally like the the refillable cartridges again it's a, a, just a, a preference thing and after doing this for 11 years I've the, the system which we use I found out to be the best and the most cheapest and the cleanest as well and that system is is buying what you call a CISS uh, bulk ink system now I'll show you mine closely in a minute, but basically what that boils down to, as I said to you, if you're buying this amount of ink from a genuine supplier, that will cost you about 70 pounds. 
and there's a very limited amount of ink inside each one of them little containers there. Something like this, which is what I buy, a packet of them with all the six major colours in, uh, I think they're 100 milliliter, 125 milliliter bottles. That cost me £10 here in the UK, and that, believe me, lasts for ages. And as I say to you, I could uh, have the cartridges that come where you inject the ink, you suck it up in, in, in the syringe, and then go straight into the cartridges. Don't like that idea, it can be very messy. I opt for what they call a CISS system, and I'm going to just show you mine now quickly. Let's, let's come over and have a look. Right, here we are at my 1500W printer. Let me just open it up. Now, as you can see here, that's the cartridges there. And there's some funky looking colored pipes that come along here and down to this little box, which is a CISS system. And that houses all the different color inks that my printer uses. There's six in total, uh, from yellow to dark cyan and black, uh, light cyan, light magenta, normal magenta. And as I say, that fed into the cartridges that come with the CISS system automatically. And all I have to do basically is keep an eye on these levels here. Now as you can see now, I'm running a little bit low at the moment, so I'm gonna be topping some up in a minute. And I've taken you on this journey because this is the sort of thing that you're gonna to have to do if you have a bulk ink system like, like what we do. And as I say, we haven't got to change anything in the printer, nothing in there. All we do is flip open the top lid here, and then as you can see, we then fill up with a syringe from our bottles. Now, those of you who have either brought a CISS system and had problems with it, or are going to buy one, don't worry about it looking the same as my one. My one literally is just a generic one. I've had about probably uh, five or six systems over the past 11 years. Some of them have played up, some of them have gone straight in and worked fine. And all they do, when they do start to play up, uh, they all I do is replace it. I buy, I'll go on eBay and buy a, another cheap one. They're all imported from the Far East, so there's no brand names, as, so to speak. Uh, that's just part and parcel of using an external CISS system on a, a printer. And you may have problems installing the cartridges, as quite a lot of people do. And let me show you how I got over uh, the problems. It's quite a recognized thing, but I'm gonna show you in case you have a similar sort of problem. Now, first of all, these cartridges here, as I said, are the original ones that normally clip in here. Let me just push, push that and move the carrier to the center. And all that first button does there is bring the cartridge uh, carrier to the center there so that you can actually withdraw the cartridges. I'm not gonna do it in my case, but what you've got here is a little tang at the back, which you pull, push forward and then if you push all these forward at the same time, basically, because they're actually all joined together, as opposed to these ones, which are, are all separate, you can put one at a time in of these. When you buy the set complete with this CISS system, that is one lot of carriers. They're all a bit floppy, but you slide them all in, push them all in, and what should happen is that the printer should register each one of them cartridges, and everything will start to work and it will be fine. Well, in a, in a lot of cases with these CISS systems, they don't register first time. Mine didn't, and I had to make this little alteration, which I'm gonna show you now, which is something you might wanna try as well. Now, as you can see on these new cartridges, for example, they've got a little circuit board there, and this little circuit board needs to make contact with the actual terminals on the printer when you put the cartridges in. Well, with a lot of these manufactured cheapo uh, types of CISS system, they don't quite touch the terminals, and all I've done is is uh, fold over some pieces of paper and behind each one just wedge it in between the um, uh, the end of the ink cartridge and that pushes the contactor plate onto the little circuit board so that they do actually register. So that's what we've done to get over that and you may have a similar problem where it's not recognizing cartridges and that is obviously the problem. One of the other problems that you could get is that uh, your waste ink normally when it does its cleaning cycles Basically, in the bottom of your printer, if you actually go inside, running the full length of the printer in there, uh, un underneath the center there, is a waste ink pad. Now, normally, your printer has a counter, which basically counts how often the printer's been used, and it's a software counter that, when it reaches its, its allotted time, 
what you'll get is the two lights will, f or these two lights will flash intermediately and you won't be able to use the printer. You'll get a piece of software come up on your screen saying that the, uh, there's a fault code or the printer has reached the end of its serviceable life. And basically all that means is, is that printer is reached the counter for the waste pads uh, possibly to be changed. Now, what we do, as I say, when this was brand new, this printer, we fitted our waste ink tank, as you can probably see there, it's got some ink in it at the moment. And that waste ink tank is connected via, let me pull this off, connected. This is the original pipe. This is the pipe here that comes from the printer head. So you've got ink coming down there and it used to connect onto there and then it goes into the printer onto them pads. But all we've done, we've pulled this pipe off of there and we've connected it onto this pipe, which as you can see goes through the back of the printer into that external waste tank. So when the heads are cleaned on the printer, it doesn't get pushed into the waste pads. It gets pushed out and through into our separate waste tank. So really one of the other criteria you want to have with your t-shirt printing printer is to have a printer where you can fit a waste ink tank to. Now I've mentioned this, I've got two videos on uh, my t-shirt printing YouTube channel playlist where I actually show the installation of this on my, my Epson 1500W and also my CISS system. But I'm just running through this now uh, just to let you know that really the things that you really want if you're gonna be using a printer uh, for t-shirt transfer printing as we do and you want it to last a long time and be a more efficient and cost effective like using the cheap inks that we use. But what you will get as I say even though you've taken that tube off and you've run it down into that waste ink tank the printer counters still count and it will happen that these two lights one day will start flashing telling you that there's a service required because the counters basically it will tell you basically that your ink pads have have blocked up, which you know isn't the case because you've had a separate ink case. But what that means is you've done, you've then got to get your printer reset them counters inside. And with this, when I first got this, I wasn't able to do that. I had to take it to an Epsom service centre and they charged me ten pounds to do that. Now the second time I've done it uh, earlier on this year, I think it was a can't remember. You've got the facility online. So what you would do then, if your printer started playing up and you can't use it anymore, but you have a waste tank fitted. Just go online, type in Epson 1500W reset code or something like that. And you may have to pay, like we paid five pounds, I think, to do it online. And then it set our printer back, the counter back to zero again. And that will happen again the next time. So yes, those are the possible faults that you could have. One with the actual little circuit boards there, not making a contact with your, your, your actual printer cartridge there. Just wedge some paper behind them so it pushes them forward. And that's because you've got a cheap unbranded CISS system as I've got here. So I'm just gonna show you now what I go through. This doesn't happen very often, but as you can see, they have far more ink in there that these are able to hold than these silly little cartridges and you'll be forever topping these up or changing these and it's a real nuisance to pull in and out and you're getting wear on that as well. So just leave this, get a system with the cartridges like this, not the refillable ones from here. Make sure you've got a separate bulk ink system like there that you can fill up from here and that's what we're gonna do now. One other thing to mention as well is I get a f I've had a few people uh, email me that they've got a problem with their printer where it's flooding ink on the page of the transfer papers or on the page of whatever they're printing out and they've got a COSS system fitted and they don't know what's caused that. Well, basically what causes that sort of stuff is one, if you haven't got a waste ink tank fitted and your pads are getting saturated or if you have got the COSS system fitted as what we have, Keep it on the same level as your printer. A lot of people might be tempted to put that up on a shelf somewhere. And what that does, it creates a siphon effect which will just pump more and more fluid into your printer and that can cause the flooding as well. So just beware of that problem. Right, so we're just gonna top up some of our ink now. Uh, and again, all I'll do is just flip the lid open. Bearing in mind, it doesn't matter if yours doesn't look like mine. The, I've had, as I say, about five or six of these over the years. The one I opted for when I got this one didn't look nothing like the advert, but it didn't bother me. It was just like the clear containers, which most of them look like. You also want to get one of these syringes. When you buy a CISS system, you can actually 
buy these. It's not, it's not a sharp point on that. It's, it's quite a blunt point. It's just basically a tube. And I use these little syringes just for sucking up the ink and then transferring it into the actual uh, container. Buy some rubber gloves. I'm only going to put one on at the moment, but uh, although it's water solid, but it will come off with a wash, but it's best if you've got a pair of them floating about. Right, so we've got yellow, black, light cyan, light magenta, normal magenta, and normal cyan. They're all a bit low at the moment, as you can see there. So I'm going for the yellow one first of all, and I'm just using the end of this little container here. So let's just put that in there. Suck up the ink. Literally just take the plug out and just start injecting it. Couldn't be any simpler. Now as you can see, I'm, the amount in here for example, this is um, uh, 10 millilitres. It doesn't actually tell us what we've got in these little cartridges, but the, f the ink in one of these syringes is far more than what you'll probably get in one of them cartridges there, as you can probably see. So by doing it this way, you're really making your ink go a long, long way between having to top this up. All right, okay. First one done up. Just have a bit of tissue around you, just to dab up any excess that's there and as I say look it can get quite messy as you can probably see there and can you imagine trying to do that in the actual printer itself in the actual print head up here you can make a right mess up there and it can all drop down through into the uh, print head and then that cause you problems as well so don't opt for that type that refillable from up here get a separate container like this and as you can see from the front now we've got a fully charged up yellow uh, container I'm just going to go along now, exactly the same as what you've seen there, and uh, fill the rest of these up now. Right, okay, there we go. I've just filled them all up, as you can see there, and that's going to last me a really long time. So I'm just going to put the lid back over there, and as I say to you, slip it down the side of your printer on the same level as your printer, not up high on a shelf or anything, because as I said, that can cause ink to flood into your printer and give you other problems as well. Now a lot of you also have got printers which you're buying second hand or you've not used for a long, long period of time and uh, you're saying that you think your, your prints are coming out stripy or with colours missing or whatever. What I tend to do is to find a full colour image, as you can probably see here, that um, I found on Google Images. Now I'm not using this to print out in any way. I use this because it's got loads and loads of different type of colours in and this is what I use as a test print for printing out. So all I'll do there is go to me print icon, click on print, and then I'm gonna to go to the options window, as you can probably see down there. Just click on that, and I'm looking for printer properties. Click on that. Now what this does, it gives you uh, a few tabs that you can click on there. That's my settings, by the way, for those of you interested. Uh, in this case, we've got best photo, we've got uh, Epsom photo quality inkjet printer. That is our uh, settings, what we've got in our printer properties. And if we just go along to the maintenance tab there, we've got a few little things we can check out. Now I'm gonna click on the nozzle check pattern and uh, then click the print button. What the printer will do then is a nozzle check and print a pattern out to make sure that all the, the, nozzles, the nozzles are actually printing out okay. So if I just pull it out there, get that over into the light, I don't know whether you can see or not, everything seems to be pretty much in order, apart from the, uh, the light cyan, which has got a few little blocks in it missing. Everything else is okay. So all I would do there is then instigate a head clean, and press start, and then what the printer's going to do is a head clean of all the heads. As you can probably see there, ink's getting pushed out through the uh, waste tube into our separate waste tank while it's performing the uh, head clean. As you can probably see down there, pushed a load of ink out. And this is ink that you would normally be paying for 
12 pound a cartridge if you was using the genuine Epsom ink. And this is why I say go for a bulk ink system, go for a waste tank. Can you see it going? There you go, all wasted ink. And believe me, after one or two of them head cleans, if you've got a dirty print head by doing your nozzle check, you'll see your expensive cartridges go straight out to waste. And that is enlightening knowing that they're about, as I say, about 12 pound each. In our case, it's not gonna happen. Our ink printer is not gonna get saturated, the pads inside, they've never been saturated on this one. I fitted these two systems, the waste ink and the CISS system, when the printer was new. A lot of people say, oh, they're a bit frightened because it'll validate the warranty of the printer. That is true, but at the end of the day, you're either gonna be tied into paying the high prices. Don't forget, when they sell a printer, they want to recoup more money back off you, uh, the, the people who make these printers, and they do that by selling expensive ink and threatening you with your warranty will be void if you fit anything external, even, even copy cat, cat inks. So just be aware. Right, we've done that now, and now I'm just gonna print another nozzle check pattern. Now, sometimes it clears on the first run, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it gets worse. So let's take a look at this. There we go. If I can get you under the light there. In our case now, that light magenta color is now fully corrected and everything's uh, perfect there. And that now means that our printer is okay to print. Now, if you've done that, they do say you never do it for over, if you like over three times, because the ink can froth up in the uh, printer head and that can cause the same sort of problem. I've done it up to five or six times. And then what I will do, was I would leave it, maybe for a few hours, for the ink to settle again, and then I'll try and print out that image, that coloured image, because I want to see that I've got no banding on that image, all the different colours have come through fine, and that just saves me wasting a sheet of transfer paper, as in this case, all I'm doing is printing out a normal piece of 80 GSM paper, which we just buy generically, as you can see there from Staples. It's basic copy paper, and that's the sort of paper we print out all our PayPal invoices, any letters that we have to print out, all done on the same printer. As well as doing our T-shirt transfers, it does all of our business needs as well, as well as me printing out my DVD covers as well, because this printer's got the facility to be able to print on uh, discs as well, and that's what we do with this printer as well. So there's no special printer needed, it's a basic inkjet printer. You can do it with a lot lower cost inkjet printer than this one if, if you didn't have the money to spend out uh, the two and I think it's just over 200 pounds for one of these. If you wanted to buy one for 70 or 80 pounds, but it's an inkjet printer. I'm not too sure about any other make. I only use the Epsom. I've always used the Epsom and they say stick with what works and that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, the main problems with Epsoms, as I said to you, is they can waste a lot of ink. I get over that by buying the cheap inks and use the system as I've shown you here. And as you can see there, all the colors are present. There's no banding, there's no faded areas. Everything's a great reproduction of what we've actually seen on the screen there. And don't forget, this is just a standard paper. If I was using photographic paper, or if I was using transfer paper, this image would really pop out as it would do on our t-shirt transfers. This is just a basic piece of flat paper that you use for gen generic printing on. But as you can see, everything's fine. So I'd now be confident that my system's now been maintained and I can go ahead and use my transfer papers on there. Now one other thing to notice as well, if you're after doing your nozzle checks after five or six times, you've let it rest for an hour and then you've gone back and the printer is still showing bits missing, that could mean that your print head is actually blocked up. Now that needs a different set of maintenance. Software maintenance like I've just shown you won't be good enough for that. You have to do a bit more physical maintenance and you may have to buy a chemical or product like this, for example. Now, I'm not, again, I'm only, prove, I'm only showing you this because this is what I've actually used in the past, as you can see there, the bottle's not full. And it's called Magic Bullet and it's called Printhead Unblocker. And what you would have to do with this stuff is suck it up in a syringe, one like this, but with a piece of rubber hose on it rather than this metal piece. You take that off and then you put a, bit, a small bit of rubber hose. You take out your ink cartridges and right at the bottom there, you'll have the little nozzle sticking up, what these pierce through, these little, uh, that's where your ink enters your printer through there, that goes in that way, don't forget. And these little nozzles sitting in there, 
you'd fit that hose over the top you'd put your carrier in other words you go to press your carrier for clean like this and as it starts to move like that shuttle you'd pull the mains plug out the back so that means that you could slide this carrier backwards and forwards then you have to do it that way and all you would do there would be to fold some kitchen roll up along this channel in there lay it down there push the cartridge along there so that the kitchen roll is underneath the print head and then you would inject that a quantity of that magic bullet through each and individual print head sitting underneath there in the hope that it would unblock and then you slide the cartridge back and then you'll find that you when you lift out that um, soaks up kitchen roll that you've laid in there you have to fold it up so it sits in this channel there that will be saturated and hopefully once you've done your nozzle checks again and cleaned maybe this stuff would have done the job for you right well i hope that video was of some use here i have covered it a little bit in the other previous videos uh, with regards to the types of inks i use and the sort of maintenance stuff i have to go through to keep my system working fine i've been doing this as you know for 11 years now with using the dye based inks not pigment inks pigment inks in an epson printer have a tendency to block them up and that could cause you to need to use stuff like that i've never had any issues at all with this printer uh, and my previous printer while i've been using dye based inks i've only had to use this when i've bought second hand printers and don't forget i've had this years and years this this hasn't been used recently and that was when i was having problems with second hand printers that i bought that hadn't been used for a long period of time me trying to clean the heads out so that's what I use. That's possibly the sort of thing that you might be looking at. Uh, you will hear lots of people say in forums and stuff like that, dye based inks is not the way to go, or they've been on the um, eBay and the inks that I use, it says it's not recommended for t-shirt printing. That's a load of rubbish. I actually provide proof on my pr playlist, in my t-shirt pr uh, printing playlist of t-shirt graphics that I've had for six to eight years and they've all been printed on dye based inks and there's no fading or whatsoever anyway hope this was of some use to you and i'll see you again in the next video and until then bye for now <laughs>